when we make things, write stories, any creative work needs input of some kind, right? So sometimes that's focused research and other times it's the indirect idea fuel of just taking time to recharge, play games, watch and read things that give us energy. And I'm looking forward to talking with Jersey today on Leaning to Art, asking him what he's been reading, watching and playing. Hello there. Thanks for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Art Cast creative work chat episode. And this is where we explore a creative problem, things that come up as being visual storytellers, teaching, teaching artists, and writers, and learners. My name is Jersey Jost. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is named... Hi, Jersey. I'm Rob Stenzinger, UX designer, interactive maker, and a teaching artist as well. So... Yeah, reading, watching, playing. This is this we've been doing these for some time, even before our more recent uh, format shift, right? I think reading, watching, playing is a surprising one when we um, dig back through the archive of well, almost of almost three hundred and fifty episodes. Uh, I actually was wrong. I was you know doing some exploring of our archive last year, and I thought, oh, we started that like a year ago or two years maybe. No. It's been going on for like for a long time, like maybe even eight or more years. And uh, so it's been through all of our format changes, I think. We wow. just, but, you know, we just keep watching stuff and reading and playing. <laughs> <laughs> we do do that a lot. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, so how did we need to check in on how we feel about reading, watching, playing at the very beginning? Um well, not, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we don't do, um, it, it's, it's a little bit in the spirit of, of the intro of, of like, what's, what are we, what are we paying attention to that's giving us energy? We don't typically, um, drop a bomb on things. We don't, we don't say like, and I hated it. I mean, we're talking about the, the stuff we like and uh, it's, yeah. it's really positive biased. So, well, and I mean, I think overall. both of us, both of us have a bias toward the analytical eye, and when something grabs us and moves us, we'd like to say, okay, let's examine it. What happened there? Is there anything that's useful for future reflection? Or is this a better, can I get better at articulating what I love and why? Uh, mm. Because that has another nice side effect of uh, making you a better conversationalist overall. You know, I, I keep going back to that L.A. stories joke with uh, Steve Martin when he's at that party, and he's like, oh, you're learning the art of conversation. She goes, yes. And then there's an awkward silence. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. That, that's a, that was a fun movie. It's been a, yeah. Um, that's, but okay. So yeah, I mean, learning to talk about the stuff you, you really enjoy ha, can send a signal as well because, you know, like in the form of fan art or, or even this kind of thing, just a little bit of commentary and it's like curated sharing. Here's the cool thing. Maybe you like this show. Maybe you like how, how we, Look at stuff. Maybe this is news to you, or you're virtually high fiving us, where you're like, "I like that too." Yeah. And so <laughs> yeah. good. So let's start. <laughs> what are you reading, watching, or playing? Pick one, and and you know, shower me with enthusiasm about it. <laughs> I don't know. Is I am I in that? Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. So I've been watch. I've recently finished watching Ted Lasso. The whole there's one season on Apple TV. And it is, um, you know, I don't, I don't share spoilers or whatnot. If this is like, you know, the, the, the quick, th you know, thumbnail sketch of what you get when you, you do a search on your, uh, streaming device. Anyway, it's, there's this guy, Ted Lasso, who is, is a very positive, uh, energetic, uh, pot, like just a, you know, honestly, a, someone who manages through positive reinforcement. He ran a successful high school uh, football team, American football. And then he gets hired to run a, well, in a British soccer, which, well, football, right? So he's still a football manager, but he's no, he knows nothing about that sport, but he's still the person he is. And that's, um, it's a, it's a solid premise. And I was, I was worried and curious. It's like, are, where are they going to go with this? Are they going to do the whole, um, you know, positivity, who needs that in this day and age? Who, you know, how could, you know, how could, how dare you uh, look at the world and be, um, you know, willing to, you know, face it with a, um, 
like a shining open heart and try to, to share that with others. Um, and it, it, but it doesn't have that spirit at all, but it is playful. It is well-written. You're going to see sort of the, the, the twists and different takes on like this kind of character going through, um, like a pretty big responsibility change and like facing, uh, other points of view that don't just, you know, fall in where it's like, yeah, let's all be positive. Heck yeah. There, no, there's tons of awesome conflict and the, the, but done with great writing empathy and, um, characters evolve. So I, I just, I love the story. And I think there's this also danger of saying things like, um, like Jersey, your, your intense positivity and stuff. I was like, Oh, Jersey's got to watch this. He's kind of like a Ted Lasso. If you get a compliment via a character comp comparison, I don't know if this lands always for you. Sometimes I think of the worst aspect of that character and I'm like, huh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so Everything I don't has mean a you're cost. Old, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not over your head and, you know, um, trying to apply positive, positive thinking to a, you know, a domain you don't understand in, you know, you're, you're, you're not that kind of leader, but, uh, mm -hmm. or in that circumstance, right. but th all the positive stuff. Anyway. But there's, 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 there's aspects that rhyme is what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know, throw this on the pile of recommendations. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't heard of it. And, and it's funny. I mean, like the, one of the, the kindest things I've ever had anybody say about me was when Zach Gialongo, and I said this before on the show, he, he, he compared me to a little league coach who takes everybody out for ice cream, whether, whether they win or lose. And I'm like, that is that is an epitaph. I want that to be, you know, the way I'm remembered. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Ted Lasso is a perfect story for you to just go on a ride with that. See someone else who has the kind of. Unless, unless it's the, um, oh, what is it called? Uh, the narcissism of minor differences where suddenly I'm watching. Oh, <laughs> I, I hate that guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Cause like, I, 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 uh, this was not on my list, but Bigsby bear. I don't know if you've ever seen this movie. No, um, no. And it's this it. guy who is, he like has this trauma. He has a childhood trauma and like, it's a really bad one. Like he's like kidnapped, but oh. he, and he's, he, while his kidnappers are feeding him this, not feeding him, they're making him watch these movies, these TV shows about this character named Bigsby Bear, who like is sort of, sort of indoctrinating him with like their worldview. And mm -hmm. then he escapes and he comes out like uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. And now he's got to acclimate to the world. And the way he acclimates is by writing the final episodes of that, of that movie. And so uh, Greg Shegel, knowing me as well as he did, was like, Jersey, you need to watch this movie. You need to watch it. And I watched it, and it was totally the narcissism of my minor differences where I'm like, I'm not like that guy. I, that guy's weird. I'm not like, am I that weird? You know, and Greg's like, oh, man, I am sorry. I missed, you missed the point of why I was asking you to watch it. <laughs> anyway. I, um, you know what, if that's what happens with Ted Lasso, I'm here for that conversation too. <laughs> I want to, I want to hear the, the off mic takedown where Jersey just goes like, that's it, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> my jam. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I, I will have to check it out. Um, all right. So something I'm reading, watching or playing, uh, I'll go to something I'm watching. Um, so have I talked with you on the show about, uh, the Miss Marple movies? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's so, come up from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. Back when Filmstruck was a thing, it was like this this uh, sort of Criterion Collection streaming service that oh my gosh, I loved it, and then it went away. Um, and I found out about these movies through that service. So it's um, oh, what is the woman's name? Margaret Rutherford playing uh, Agatha Christie's character Miss Marple in a, a number of films. I think there's four or five. And I just rewatched Murder at the Gallop, which is just it's such a funny movie, and it's uh. Margaret Rutherford steals every scene with her wildly expressive face. Like while other characters are talking, she, she's her she's acting out uh, Miss Marple, thinking through the the problem that they're trying to work out together. And her face just contorts and twists and and wobbles, and you can't take your eyes off her. She is so intensely funny. Um, but it's 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 a murder mystery series. I mean, everybody knows Agatha Christie stories, right? I mean, it's it's who done it. 
you know, uh, they find the body in the parlor, and it, apparently they died of this, but she knows that there's something else going on. The cops don't understand, and they're always telling her, oh, you're a dotty old lady. You can't help us with this. We've got this under control. And she and her intrepid friend, Mr. Stringer, always wind up uncovering the mystery. And, and, it, and what I love about these stories is it has a ton of conflict, but there's, like, no violence, right? There's violence in that somebody's always murdered, but uh, there's no <laughs> there's no violence in terms of like what I love about Agatha Christie's characters is that they always conquer the villain with their intellect, and that, that feels mm. refreshing every once in a while <laughs> to encounter that kind of adventure fiction. So that's almost well, I mean, four plus movies, and this is like the the Marvel Empire hypothesis being tested, right? Hmm. Like decades before, where you got you have well tested. Um, audience approved enthusiastic you know set of original materials and then turning that into a, a series oh, of movies how, in, yeah, how interesting yeah um, and well it, as, as an aside um i watched a documentary about margaret rutherford and i found out that agatha christie did not like her portrayal of miss marvel and i was like oh that's disappointing because i love it <laughs> oh so the author well, did, did not approve of it but <laughs> could be it could be narcissism of minor differences stuff too right <laughs> It Where be. it's like, oh, your interpretation of, uh, you know, intense thoughtfulness doesn't match mine. You suck. I, <laughs> I, I don't have time for this. I'll uh, cash this check. Begrudging. <laughs> so you got another one? Okay. Well, let's see. Um, <clears throat> uh, do, do. Let's see. Uh, okay. Playing. Um, I have... Um, uh, I've, I, I, what's super funny, I post a lot, post every day on my website and I talk about things I do to wind down or whatever. So it's like, I either draw or I play a game, but I'm like, gosh, this is always the topic of my article. What's my deal? Um, and it's like, well, that's a safe thing to you know, write about as opposed to stuff that's more, I don't know, intense feeling. Um, but you know, so I've, I've recently talked about playing through this older game, Spider-Man on PS4, loved it, finished it. And that's a nice, um, it's it's this real great sweet spot of getting through a um, like a sandbox environment that's that switches gears into a controlled narrative from time to time. And uh, so it, you've got these hooks of story plus action and exploration and then the feeling of the um, the the traits of being like Spider-Man that's been t turned into pretty approachable, um, you know, game interactions. You do have to practice a bit to to really um, thrive though, getting through the different fights and the, and, you know, boss fights are a little bit different than, you know, when you're doing your regular stuff on the street, but like having a game that is in the back of my mind that I can look forward to playing is it's a nice, I don't know what it's a mechanism where I, I, I wrap up my work on time and I, I'm like, aha, cool. Now I'm switching gears and going to relax a bit. And, but I finished Spider-Man. And so for a good, you know, couple of weeks, I didn't have that. And so I'm just throwing in my actual pick here, which is Hades. Mm. Um, and uh, so Hades, you know, this, this, it's so weird. This had popped in my feet. I don't know anything about it. I, I buy a new game every, you know, three to six months or whatever. And, um, but this has been around for a few years. It's been in um, open or, or in, um, you know, early access which is when a, when a game developer is far enough on a game or in their estimation, which doesn't always meet the audience's estimation that, hey, okay, cool, we can you know put this into the public's hands, but please everybody know we're still working on it. Early access is the you know context here. And they had this in early access for a couple of years and clearly polished the heck out of it. It's one of the best designed feeling game experiences I've had in a long time. And I think I want to do some, some more thoughtful analysis on it. Cause I shared like one reaction article on my blog recently. And, um, it's this, this flow of, well, you're this, you're the son of Hades and you go out in, in this, you know, action dungeon crawl, which it's randomized. So you don't have to see the same dungeon every time, but you go out, you go as far as you can. You, you know, you don't make it, the monsters best you, you pop up in a pool of blood back at the house of Hades. Right. Mm. And that cycle is, it's almost, it's 
when someone does this in a way that's that's so hooked with between the action and the narrative and there's just enough story to be like well who's this zag you know, was it zagarus zagarius who's the son of hades um and then all the cast of characters they and how they chose to interpret them and stuff through you know you probably have run into before with greek mythology and and even if you haven't they're given so much character every single character you interact with you know, dying in the dungeon and showing back up in the house of Hades, it's just putting in a shift at work. It's not this crushing defeat where you're mm. like, I, I suck. I failed. In fact, you're bringing through other game mechanisms and currency and stuff where it's like the, the purple stuff. It's called darkness. If you have that currency with, with you, when you go back to the house of Hades, it's time to go shopping and upgrade your character and stuff like that. Oh. And I, I mean, it's got, systems interwoven with systems that are communicate that that like i'm never confused in this game and yet it didn't have a tutorial really you know and on and on like it's just so fun to interact with the characters and um there's even this cool gift system where again systems upon systems and you learn them you know little by little as you encounter these things there's this there's a MacGuffin gift it's like nectar of the gods if you carry one of those with you or more if you get a few of them you in conversation when you chat with characters either out in the dungeon or at the house of hades you're gonna um have this option to give them a gift and that's interesting mm -hmm. and everyone reacts in a way that's true to their character and but it's this little once you do it a couple times you kind of get what the the macguffin is is they give you a gift back and um it's going to be some kind of uh, wearable upgrade as you go back into the dungeon that affects you in a certain way. Mm. Anyway, this game smooth, looks really good. It looks really layered. Good. It's beautiful, and the sounds and the 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 the, the visuals so well crafted. Um, there's uh, yeah, it's so it's an aesthetic uh, feast and a fantastic game. Um, so well done that's yeah hades, hades and it's not an expensive Steam. game it's on uh the nintendo switch as well that's the version i'm playing oh okay very yeah. cool yeah that that game does look gorgeous and that animated sequence they showed at the beginning when you first loaded up on steam is like also the design of the character himself is just really really great looking Looks like. I'm curious to go back through to um, I want to understand the history of it and uh, like how that all came together. It's that good of a project where I it'd be neat to just be nourished by how the heck did they decide and do what they did to to make that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Are, are we at uh, time to take a break? Yeah, let's um, let's hear what, um, you know, more about what you're um, maybe maybe more about what you're watching later on all right i don't know yeah uh it, it, and or reading uh for sure reading. so how oh, about yeah. we're, uh we've got uh we're gonna take a break thanks some people to make this show possible it's gonna take about a minute and a half and then we're gonna come back and finish up with some more of our picks and maybe some more thinking about reading watching playing in a, in a broader context but as i said we've got to thank some people first and the, the people i have in mind are the folks who support us on patreon Patreon.com slash LeanSmart is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote if you believe in us and what we do. If this show is helping you to think and do useful creative work, you can join us at uh, LeanSmart.com slash Patreon or Patreon.com slash LeanIntoArt. And I want to thank five people who've been supporting us on a regular basis. Jodels Pox. Thank you, Jodels. J Bomb Artist on Twitter. It means a lot to us. Metal Witch Sketchbook Project. Thank you so much for believing in us and what we do. Gail Bushman, Nightingale Art on Instagram. Thank you, Gail. And Sophie Lawson, who you can find on Twitter at Sophie Lawson Art. Thank you, Sophie. And Greg Horvath. Thanks to all of them. And you can join them at patreon.com slash lean into art, where you'll find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record only for people who support us on Patreon. And to get you access to the Patreon or the Lean Into Art Discord server. Actually, it's a public server. Anybody can join, and the invite link will be in the show notes for this in every episode. But uh, you will get access to the Patreon-only section of 
the Lena Twart Discord, where you, there's a social channel, there's like a, a brain trust channel, actually it's called Castle Level Up, where you can post work in progress and get feedback from fellow leaners. There's been a lot of really cool interactions happening there. So that's, if you want to join, you can go to lenatwart.com slash Discord. But one more time, patreon.com slash lenatwart is where you can support us. And thanks to everybody who does. It means a lot to us. Right. It really does. So, what, uh, uh, do you want to uh, use some music to get to the next section? Like, we, like yeah, you know, I, I'm just something. always like, what's going to happen? You know, I know. Spider Man no, and his amazing friends, Ice Man. <laughs> Since you're talking with Spider Man. <laughs> uh, uh, remember, music. yeah, the long slogs. There was no menus of Netflix and YouTube options, whatever. Infinite, infinite options we have now. Yeah. Imagine waiting and waiting and waiting to be able to watch a cartoon like that. Yep, I remember it well. I remember it, it was uh, that time period was the like the time of my life when I started getting up uh, with an alarm clock on purpose. Right? It's like I have mm. to get up at seven. Transformers is on at seven, and then Spider Man's on right after that. <laughs> so. <laughs> yep. And yeah, uh, it was yeah, it's worth it. Otherwise, if you know you get up too early, you have to watch like the Egg Day news, right? The, all the <laughs> all the news about the farms. Uh, on w- some days, for some reason, it, there'd be Captain Kangaroo, and then other cartoons would happen after that. But oh anyway. yeah, no, yeah. actually, I, you're bringing back memories of when I got up too early, and I would catch these weird shows like Vegetable Soup, The New Zoo Review, uh, and I'm like, what? What is this? You know. <laughs> And, and and vegetable soup was a very strange show. It had some like really interesting aesthetics that I just did not know what I was looking at at first. Anyway, um, so we we're in the second section of the tea, getting through this book because I've been listening to the audio book um, while I'm on jogs. But the we got hit with a pretty big snowstorm here in the Midwest, and I'm sure it's it's equally bad up in Minnesota. Uh, but we got like four feet of snow. In, even with my cleats, I got like those little things that you put on your shoes, like with the spikes so you don't slip. Mm. Uh, it's it's just it's impossible to like run through two feet of snow when people aren't shoveling their walks. Come on, Columbus, shovel your walks. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I haven't been running. So it's been slow going getting through the book, but I've been reading Wild Mind, Living the Writer's Life by Natalie Goldberg. Mm-hmm. This was inspired by something you were talking about uh, writing down the bones recently. I was like, yeah, you know, I need to reread that. And I went to my local library's website to see what audiobooks I could get. And uh, they didn't have Writing Down the Bones, but they did have Wild Mind. I'm like, well, okay, we'll, we'll see what that's about. And it's sort of a continuation on the thoughts about getting to what she calls first thoughts. And this idea of free writing, keeping your hand moving, finding out what's inside of you in a more intuitive... It feels very much like she's a writing instructor who feels like a Jedi in the sense that it's all about reaching out with your feelings, digging down, looking at your feelings, use your intuition, stop asking yourself all these questions, just start writing stuff and see what comes out of you. And in those thoughts will be the things that you, that you really want to say to the world. Um, And Mm. then also she just like, she really proposes practice for practices sake, which I think is very harmonious with what we talk about in lean to art. So um, if, if you've, if you've read Writing Down the Mo- Writing Down the Bones and want to read more, Wild Mind is a great continuation of that. Um, I also don't think I don't think you need to have read Writing Down the Bones to enjoy Wild Mind. It yeah, it sounds really really useful. Um, are you feeling any cognitive disson- dissonance when you either absorb this or try to put it to use? Um. I, I I I wouldn't call it cognitive dissonance, but I am finding the walls in my psyche, my heart, whatever you want to call it, that I've put up for myself. The walls that I've put where I've said, like, don't don't dig around in there. We're, we're done with that part. And I'm like, oh, are we? Uh, and, I, and so I'm finding them and it's uncomfortable. But it, it, right now I feel like I'm in a sort of a mapping mode where I'm like finding those places where I've put those little walls up. And mm-hmm. sort of made it like put a little note. I put a pin on my map saying, okay, you got to come back to that later when you have a little bit more time to like really sit with it. Um, so it also, I mean, I, we did a two minute practice, which was free writing. And I think doing the, the practice that Natalie Goldberg uh, proposes in Wild Mind sort of prepared me for that 
to minute practice where I came to it with more of a readiness to engage with it. And, in, in, in a, I, to uh, borrow from your language, I hacked my own creative challenge in that two-minute practice. I said, okay, I'm going to do free writing, but it's going to be free writing directed at this thing because I already know that I've been doing some mapping of my psyche. And the, 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 if I go into that place, there's going to be a ton of cognitive dissonance. Um, that That's sense? the puzzle. Yeah, free yet directed. I think that's interesting. Like, I, I think embracing some constraints does, uh, I, th I think it, and then into it, it, it's almost like saying, hey, wait a minute, I'm not going to let my intuition out in an open field. I'm going to put myself in a location that I think will be uh, good for us all, right? Mm -hmm. And then like saying, well, I have a, essentially a writing assignment or a writing need, goal, commitment, you know, job, what have you, what, um, you know, to only free write and let, let stuff go wherever. I think things would emerge, of course, that would fit utility and need. But I would also think if that's, I, I would suspect um, a lot of useful practice, but then saying, well, where, you know, where's the balance that, that could be a tension for me uh, that, that I would uh, guess would exist of, of just sort of, um, yeah, clearly I've got lots of, you know, different p puzzles and pieces in my background of ideas and experiences that are, um, are going to come out in free writing. Yay. But also spending how much time is useful there. I don't know. Well, I, I, I still would advocate doing it if you haven't done it before in that free way because I think when when I put it towards directed work, it's given me the liber or the um, the permission to act without expectation. I'm gonna put it in this direction and see what happens, right? Whereas had I not done the practice of just free writing and just let, let just and really with no objective at all, it would be really hard for me to not think about an objective in doing free writing for a directed project. Right? Mm. Um, I think that's that's part of it. Is it's 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 like trying to meditate on a problem without practicing meditation. <laughs> now who's talking, Jedi? I know this is good. No, this is really good. I'm la I'm not being snarky. I'm I'm, I'm being playful. It because <laughs> uh, this. It, there, this is that space of counterintuitive, um, it, you know, if in the, in a certain context, you could say something like that and just be like, going, Whoa, let's look at the sky for a long time now. <laughs> um, and <laughs> which, which also busted. I've been there. <laughs> same here. And I, I find that I'm, I'm trying to say that with love and in, in a constructive way to see like, yeah, see, there is something to that. And if yeah. we only bottle that up and say, well, you have to be only this ingredient and taken off the shelf at one particular time, the practicing of that kind of open and in, intuitive approach is worthy in its own, you know, as its own pursuit. Um, that actually does have applied use, but it's a little bit of a, um, uh, there's, there's conflict in those ideas, right? I mean, it's saying like, Oh, I'm going to go be intuitive for my job. And it's like, well, which one are you going to be? Mm. And the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So wild mind, that yeah. was, that was my, that's what I'm, I'm slowly getting through that book and I'm enjoying it a lot. Yeah. I'm sold. I'm throwing that on the pile too, to get to. Oh my. So what are we, let's see, is there anything else I've, I really wanted to, to get around to sharing? I've, I've not done a lot of reading lately. Got a bit of a queue building up, um, focused on other, other projects. What else? Yeah, I think, I think I've gone through, you know, my list. I could talk about my hero academia again. Um, again. but yeah, I like, uh, I like the anime and, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a it's a fantastic uh fantastical fantastic story about um you know someone who wants to be a superhero and has to find an indirect path to get there because they weren't born to be one um in their 
genetics and background, right? And that's the, uh, you know, that's the main character. So how do they get those abilities and all that stuff? And it's, um, it's just a, it's a well-crafted, um, uh, serial story that also one thing I think is awesome too, that because I've finally, um, got around to watching one of the movies they make, which I think is a cool practice where when, 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 um, you know, the project of a, a story that is a manga that becomes anime that becomes potentially other offshoots and, and interpretations. I think that's a really healthy way to engage with creativity where we get a little hard, like overall that's, that is, I mean, many of us accept that in, in our, um, in, and I guess I can say from what I can see in, in, in how people react to pop culture, but like, there's fl- plenty of plenty of noise about um, when someone interprets a character or does something different and or or um, uh, you know breaks this idea of I don't know what someone thought was canon or whatever even that's that word canon um, I like it when 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 there's a creative openness to um, explore side projects with with a with a story and so like taking movies. Um, it's saying like, maybe it fits in the timeline. Maybe it doesn't. I actually think in, with my hero academia, the movies, like the first one I saw totally fits in the timeline. Um, but I think it's cool even if they, they take liberties. Um, and in a way like the movies or the other side projects are different celebrations and different interpretations that why not? It's, it's make believe it's storytelling, have fun, play. Yeah. If someone's playing and they're not playing what you want to play, don't play with them. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I honestly, for true, was having this conversation this morning on my uh, drawing live stream, which I do, everybody. By the way, if you haven't heard, I do them uh, twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And I was doing, I was doing the drawing of a He Man character. And, you know, whenever I talk about He Man in mixed company, the, the topic of the new television shows that are coming out comes up and, like, oh, are you excited about it? Or are you mad about it? I'm like, I'm, I'm ambivalent. I'm indifferent to it. I, I have the filmation shows, 130 episodes. I'm very happy with that. I feel very well served by it. And I think it's wonderful that the concept is elastic enough to allow interpretation and new creativity. And what's more is even if they did make it exactly how like I enjoyed it in filmation, uh, it wouldn't be the same since it's been like three decades and it's not the same people anymore. It's going to be different. That's the way it should be. That's the way art, art should be. It should be evolving and interpreting and building on. Uh, so, and, and, and I don't have to love it. I don't have to watch the show. It's okay. You know, it, it, it feels like we've been in this spiral since I want to say 1999, where mm-hmm. everybody is so angry about their entertainment and, and, and childhood entertainment getting reinterpreted and, and built upon or evolved. And it's just like, let's let's breathe for a second. And remember that this is art. This is interpretation. This is entertainment. This isn't uh, there's not a lot hanging on this. And you know what? We get to make stuff too. It's okay. <laughs> That's uh, one of one of the um, the wonderful ideas of of this is uh, gosh, there's a couple of different uh, anime series that um, they totally take their characters in the last two minutes of the show, and instead of like a you know maybe it's a bit of a teaser or maybe it's a bit of a reminder of part of the main point, but then they totally twist them into being cute versions, right? Mm. The visual design, all kinds of aesthetic, maybe their vo- vocal performance changes, all kinds of, st- and all of a sudden you have this silly thing. Even, even if like the main show was, um, like I think of the record of Lotus War and the, in the, um, the TV series, right? Um, or I think of um, Ghost in the Shell uh, TV. Well, anyway, and like right baked in the same creative product package, it's like, well, here's the series, but all, all we're willing to do the, like we're willing to do playtime and silliness. Mm, mm. And, uh, yeah. And, and that's, uh, like how interesting is, is that? And I don't know, I, something I'd like to file away, like, you know, like we do, maybe, maybe we could talk about other things we, we get out of, uh, reading, watching, playing. Um, or, yeah. or other questions, reactions. In, yeah, in a, let's do that. Let's do, 
So do you want to take one more break and then we'll talk about that? <laughs> oh, my Windows just did that thing that it does. We were just talking about before we start recording where it's like, oh, hey, you, you hovered over. I cursed uh, you. I curse you. Yeah, you, you hovered over an app too long, so you must only want that app on your screen. I'll gladly remove all the other apps for you. It's like, no, I kind of need It's like, <laughs> is it a, what what is the mental model with this feature? Is it like, um, it's almost like the apps are playful Smurfs or something, and you're, you're like, you look at them too intensely, and they all run and hide, except one who's caught in your gaze. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, so we're going to take one more break. And we're going to talk about some other people who make this show possible. And then we'll come back and think a little bit about what we want to read, watch, and play next. And maybe some other thoughts on like why it's important for us, why we feel it's important for us to check in on, this, on what we're consuming in terms of how it informs our art. So um, the thing that uh, – well, actually, the people that we're going to talk about are us. Uh, we make this show possible. We work hard on stuff, and we bring those, all that thinking into this project called Lean Into Art. And the thing that I make, funny enough, very related to reading, watching, playing, is a podcast, another one besides this one, called the 4 Million Years Later Podcast. What is the 4 Million Years Later Podcast, Jersey? I'm so glad you asked. It starts with the question, does creativity thrive in freedom or in constraints, right? 4 Million Years Later is a story analysis podcast wherein the subject of study is the 1980s Transformers cartoon. We watch an episode a week and dig deep to explore the story's structure and meaning, infer the writer's intentions, and synth synthesize them with the context of conflicting needs of a daily television show explicitly designed to advertise toys. You can find it in podcatchers everywhere. Just do a search for 4 Million Years Later. Or you can go subscribe at 4millionyearslater.com. Rob, what do you got? Well, I have a workshop called Customizing Your Next Creative Challenge. So every month, creative communities create challenging challenge events to celebrate, to draw comics, writing, make video games, and even like the teaching arts. Well, make the next creative challenge you choose do good stuff for you. I mean, they're supposed to be fun, right? And productive too, if that's what you want. Well, get my customizing your next creative challenge workshop. Craft the right output and experience you're looking for. And you can get this. You can stream the workshop on Skillshare. You can purchase your own downloadable copy at gum.co slash C-Y-N-C-C. That's gum.co slash C-Y-N-C-C. And there you can also buy it as a one hour virtual workshop upgrade. And I'll facilitate the customize your next creative challenge for you live, mm. which is also at gum.co slash C-Y-N-C-C. Very cool. So, all right. Uh, do we need another little bit of music to get us to the... <laughs> yeah. You remember this. Is this mask? Yeah. Yeah. So, so okay. this so mask was targeted at... So I, I was opinionated every every age, right? So mask was for kids who are just a little younger than me, right? And I was like, I'm not... I don't know who they're talking to, but I'm not paying any attention. <laughs> I'm a young person who needs to create a difference in my, you know, world by saying I'm, I'm past that. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, then that's, and, and so from what I can tell, having kids, that still, that still continues. <laughs> I, uh, something we talk about a lot in the 4 million years later podcast is like, we talk about the show from our perspectives as young people and as grown ups. And one of the things that we constantly come back to is this idea of like how much pretending we do as children, how much concealing from the world we do of ourselves. Right. And like one of the topics is, is uh, how, when I was an 11 year old boy, and I think it was this way for a lot of 11 year old boys growing up uh, in that time was it's like, boy, those girls over there sure are cute and fascinating. And I want to know more about them. But if I let anybody know that I feel this way, it is social suicide. So I'm going to pretend that they're gross and say, nah, I don't really want to do anything with you. But man, am I fascinated by it. Right. And so, mm. <laughs> yeah, it's just like as a child, you do oh. so much like that, that compartmentalizing Dude. like, yeah. Because the mask, I mean, the vehicles, of course, I'm like, that's a sweet helicopter. Hmm. Must not think about it. Because <laughs> if I do, yeah. Yep. Uh, 
that's that's great. Yeah, four million years later is such an awesome show too. Like uh, you you do you, it's it is a great uh, exploration of of the like the the now appreciation and you have the teaching artist angle and the story analysis and all that. I mean, there's so many good layers to that show that mm-hmm. I mean, clearly if you're listening or watching this, uh, my gosh. Well, thanks for that. Uh, so we're going to conclude with some thoughts on reading, watching, playing. What are mm-hmm. you thinking about? Um, so our, 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 I guess two different ideas. I'm curious about um, reactions about what, you know, being being nourished, anything to highlight of of the your, the recent excursions into, you know, reading, watching and playing um, the the you know big reactions. Um, and then I'm curious about um, if. You know, if we covered that and or well, like what's what's next? What's on the queue? Yeah, well, I, I, I can sort of actually I, I have a, a thought that addresses both in a way. Um, mm. I'm still in the process of setting up this studio that's behind me. And um, I just made a big um, amount of progress on the side that's over there that nobody can see. And over there was where I was going to set up my gaming stuff. Uh, I have a, let's see, looking at it right here from a distance, I have an Atari 2600, a PlayStation 1, a Wii, and I think that's all I got over there right now. Um, and they're just, they're just, they're, they're all in a, in a stack ready to be connected to this tiny 13-inch CRT television, hmm. uh, which literally has no function anymore except to be, you know, the, the game system. So, Big react, big feelings. Um, I don't get to play as much as I would like to. I really don't. Um, and and I know part of that is I'm not allowing myself. I'm not. I'm not making that space. Like when you're talking about playing Spider-Man on PS4, it's like, you know, you, you're finishing on time so that you can make sure to like time box some actual de- decompression play in your life. And I haven't been allowing that. So, what do I want to read, watch, play next? I want to break out some of these old games and play them again. Um, I want to play my PS1. I've got. I've got some. I got Resident Evil 2 on that thing, man. I haven't played that in, like, a <laughs> decade. I'd love to get my hands on that game again. That's fun. And now you have a cell phone to check while you're waiting for load times. So <laughs> that's, that's, I true. mean, that's some nostalgia um, upgrade waiting to happen. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> if only I could send an iPhone back to 1996 Jersey. <laughs> So, yeah, it's it, an old friend of mine, Tom, is in the chat. He says, oh, it's called Growing Up Jersey. Well, yeah, it, it, it it's part of it is that whole business of as we get more proficient, we wind up taking on more responsibility, and that's all a good thing. Uh, but I also, like, I want to, like, I'm finding myself taking on so much that I don't have room for a hobby anymore, and I'd like to have a hobby. Yeah, I'd like to do something that's not for any productive purpose. You know, as I was listening to the Amanda Palmer podcast recently, uh, the art of asking for anything, and she had a conversation hmm. with her therapist, and not, and it wasn't therapy section, but but he was, it was just kind of like a friendly conversation with this person who happens to be her therapist, and he said something that like it felt kind of packaged, but it also kind of like it it hit a it dinged a bell in my head as he said like if you look at self help sections, there's like more so now than ever there's a lot of books that use the word productivity in self-help. He's like, and he said, that's troubling to me. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's, we are, we are investing a lot of value in this idea of being productive. And, and I say this as somebody who hacks his creative challenge every year to make a product out of the creative challenge season. So it's like, I'm not, I am, I by no means have the moral high ground on this issue, right? It's something I'm thinking about because it, it's viscerally very um, real to me. So what? <laughs> What's so funny? I don't know why, but that language, uh, it reminds me of the, you know, the, the little, the conflict, uh, between what, um, Anakin and Obi-Wan, right? Oh yeah. Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan like totally balances his time, right? He's like, you know, I don't know. They're having an argument about this is what I'm picturing in my head. Right. (laughs) And of course it, it, you know, Anakin's like, um, uh, be productive or else, you know, just, <laughs> yeah, you got to hack everything and make it all a, you know, a, a hackathon and life's a hackathon. And he's, and, yeah. and then, you know, Obi-Wan of course is like, I have the high ground. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, and, anyway, and Tom, Tom's clarifying his point, saying like we all ha- we all need a hobby. What we can't do is blow off the real world to have fun as we get older, and that's true. Uh, one of the things that, as somebody who teaches yeah. uh, young people, uh, it's like when they 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 ask me, like they ask all like, oh, Mr. Jones, do you have games on your phone? I'm like, well, not really. And then like they start telling me about Among Us and Animal Jam and stuff, and like I'll see them one week later, and they've done like. 12 hours, 15 hours of like upgrading their character in Animal Jam, right? They, they did all this grinding to get the jewels so they can get all the costumes for their characters and everything. I was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> you, you have an enormous amount of bandwidth for this kind of activity that I just don't have access to. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why when I think about what I want to play next, I want to start with stuff that I have played because I don't have the resources to invest in leveling up at a brand new thing. Right. So that, that, that's that's a trade off that I'm making when I think about oh. in, introducing play into my life. I think that's fantastic, too. Like revisiting um, like previous previously enjoyed things is um, I mean, that can be pretty darn nourishing, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a that's a really good idea. It's like you may have a, you know, whatever you've collected and and, you know, getting a chance to reconnect with that is that's pretty great. Um, I did. I experienced that recently where, I mean, kids are, I'm, I'm really happy to be a dad and stuff, but like, I have not really, I can't remember the last time I watched the Lord of the Rings movies, you know, and, and in like a decade. <laughs> and I did used to watch them a lot more often than that, you know, not daily or weekly or monthly, but more than decade. Um, anyway, so it's, it is fun to go back. So that, that is cool. I like that. That, that angle on the reading, watching, playing again. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's pros and cons to it, but I, I do think that multiple watches of something that I really enjoyed gives me a chance. Well, like what I'm experiencing again, not to keep advertising my transformers podcast, but there's a, it's a different experience to watch it thoughtfully and attentively with the, with the express purpose of having to relay what I saw to somebody else. I'm watching this so that I can describe it to somebody else. Right. And Mm. I see things that I didn't see before when I do it that way. And I feel like sometimes with, I don't want to, I don't want to bag on binge culture, Rob. I mean, it is what it is, but I feel like sometimes like when we're letting it just wash over us like that, we're receiving things, but I I don't feel like I'm being attentive to what I'm receiving. If that makes sense. Uh, I think it does. Like I really, I do enjoy, um, I, this is an interesting debate, not, not intense debate, but I conversation with my wife, uh, Kate Shield Stenzinger, um, where I'd like to have no spoilers and going totally fresh. And then I do enjoy a rewatch for things that really hit the right buttons. Right. Mm. And like, for instance, uh, the Witcher, um, and, uh, which, you know, that, that has a certain, cause there's so much and there's, it, there's a non, it's told out of time order and all this stuff too. So it's like, mm there's a huge perspective shift going back and watching it again. That's this instant reward. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so some things are built for that. Um, but then like, um, you know, Kate likes to actually pretty much know what's going to happen. <laughs> so yeah, we're pretty different pages that way, but yeah. 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 Um, oh. interesting. So yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. So reading, watching, playing again, make more time, um, I, th- I find I like to have like, um, thoughtful, playful rewards, right. Um, if, if, if looking forward to, to, you know, to the, to a thing, a different activity. And I'm, I actually am kind of done with the idea that like, I've, I've really tried in my own reflections and stuff, um, self-criticized quite a bit about like, gosh, you really care about productivity. Isn't that bad? Or don't you want to be an artist or whatever? And I'm like, I, I can care about that a lot and still, you know, be an artist. And, um, it's okay to want to make stuff also. Um, (laughs) right. So it's just, I think the important thing is just to recognize that it, that no one of those things is all of us, right? It, it's it's very easy for me to sometimes think that whatever voice that is currently active is the all of me, and nope, there's other parts. So, hmm. uh, and, and and they all coexist, oh. right? So let's 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 manage let's manage the team. That's a metaphor we've been using a lot lately: is managing that whole team inside of us. 
Um, I, I think as soon as we're, yeah, I mean, if you have a, a willingness to, to, um, to hear the different, you know, discord and harmony of different ideas that you have and just sort of hold the space for that, just be like, wow, look at, look at me puzzling something out and disagreeing or feeling a big thing. And that's, that's interesting. And that has, I mean, it also has a lot of, uh, it, I find it can be, I'm more gentle with, with myself if I'm doing that kind of thing. And, uh, and I can sort of, and actually I can get back to work faster too, because I want to make stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> making stuff is a lot of fun. And then yes, then making stuff and sharing it with the world and hopefully engaging in sustainable trade. All of those things matter all at the same time. <laughs> So and wait, just, nope, I'm out too much. <laughs> I, I, I was, I was carrying this plate, this tray of plates and now whew, falling down the steps. <laughs> 12 <laughs> raspberry pies. And then you fall down the yep. stairs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <laughs> so I think we did a, another podcast. So uh, thanks Rob for this discussion. Thanks everybody who showed up in the chat and hung out with us and um, chimed yeah. in. Uh, my and, pleasure. And yeah, thank you everyone. And so we record and stream live every other week now, and we stream it all on our platforms, on all of our platforms, on Twitch, YouTube. Lena Twart has a YouTube channel now. Uh, you can subscribe there. And we stream it into the Discord as well. So if you join us at lenatwart.com slash Discord, you can watch it there too. There's no escaping it. We're on every channel, just like in we They Live. Over the yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're watching now, please consider liking the video. That helps more people find it. And you can find the audio podcast at patreon.com slash leanatwart and leanatwart.com. Until next time, I have been Jersey Droz of leanatwart.com, Jersey Droz on Instagram. And I'm Rob Stenzinger, also of leanatwart. And, you know, I don't represent Instagram, but I'm there too. (laughs) Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user lean into art and you can reach us via email at lean into art at gmail.com and remember leaners aren't wieners thanks for listening <laughs>